What's going on guys? So today we're talking about a brand new flashlight that I'm very excited about. Um, this is the one that I've been carrying, but I put it back in the box so you can see how it arrives. Um, this is the new Thrunite T10T version 2. All right, this is available both in cool white as well as neutral white. Neutral white is the one that I've been carrying. Now, what makes it special to me is that it has my logo on there. It has my logo on there because I helped design it. So I contacted through night, told them my ideas on, you know, more of an ideal EDC light for me, at least what I like and what I think a lot of people might enjoy. And it became a reality. So here it is. Um, comes in this little uh, tin. All right, paperwork. This is basically just a thank you. All right, as well as, oops, gotta find the English version so I can read it. Uh, as well as contact email, okay, in case you have any questions. All right, then we have, of course, the paperwork with the breakdown of what's going on. So let me find the English version of that as well. So you could pause right there. You can see there's five different modes. All right, there's your output and run times. All right, there's a little sneak preview of the, <laughs> the light, which is really cool. I'm not going to lie, I like seeing my logo on there. It's always nice to get a little notoriety. Uh, over the years, I've talked to tons and tons of different companies, and I've given all kinds of ideas. And uh, once in a while, you know, people give me credit for it, which is very cool. This is one of those cases. Um, so when you get this light, the pocket clip is obviously off of it. It is removable. Okay, so the actual light itself is in like a little bag. It's sitting here. It does not come with a battery. The battery source for this flashlight is a single AA battery. Uh, a very key thing for me, something I really wanted to see in this light. But the little pocket clip's gonna be sitting there. The light will be here, wrapped up. All right, take it out. Take out the pocket clip if you choose to use it. Underneath we have some spare O-rings. I'm gonna pop the pocket clip back on. When I first got this, I put it in my uh, little uh, leather um, Hitch and Timber 2.0, that pocket organizer, and it just fit. It was a little bit snug for my liking, so I ended up taking it out uh, and put the pocket clip back on so I can carry it just in the pocket. Sometimes it's clipped, sometimes it's just loose in there, uh, but it is nice that it's removable, just like most you know flashlights today. So here's a close-up shot. You can see the logo is engraved on top of the head. All right, you can see a side switch here. The other engraving is a Thrunite T10T V2. So the first thing I want to talk about here is the body of the flashlight. I chose to go with a polished titanium, and that is mostly because of this light. That's why I broke this out. This is the older Thrunite Tie 5T. All right, this is one of my favorite EDC lights, all right, because it felt like glass. It's just super smooth, polished titanium. Now, over the years, it has scratched up quite a bit. You can't even see the, the writing that was on it. But it still held up very nice and is still super, super smooth. All right, absolutely love this light. This is being retired and going to my good friend, Corey. Now, another thing I really want to see in this light was a different grip pattern. All right, there's nothing wrong with what's out there. Obviously, this one's smooth. It has no grip pattern. Uh, but just the common black anodized flashlight with the very fine, you know, cross checkering. You know, it's just been done. It's just kind of plain. So I want to do something different. Uh, call this or consider this the grenade pattern. All right, so this has a, a very loose resemblance to a hand grenade, uh, but I just like the thicker, you know, ribbing that's on it. All right, because this is polished up, there's no sharp edges or anything anywhere, and it's not super grippy, I'd say. Uh, if your hands were wet, it's not going to facilitate extra grip, but it's definitely uh, something that's there. It's really mostly for looks and just the feel of that texture, uh, but I like it. Again, it just kind of sets the light apart a little bit. Now, one thing I originally wanted in this light was a tail switch, okay? I kind of prefer a tail switch over a side button. However, I was presented with the option of a magnetic bottom. So I ultimately decided to go with the magnetic bottom for two reasons. One, when you have a tail switch, you cannot tail stand the flashlight. And that's a big deal for me in an emergency. I like to be able to turn on the light and rest it down on the table so it can illuminate the entire room. So not only does this tail stand if needed, but it's also magnetic. All right, in case you have a specific situation where you want to, you know, stick this to something metal. Um, the very specific scenario that I always think of in my mind when you're talking about magnetic stuff is, you know, auto repair. Something happens to your car, it's dark out, you lift, stick this, you know, to anywhere on the hood that you have exposed metal. You can use it inside the engine bay if you need to, you know, things like that. Obviously, the sky's the limit. You can use this in any fashion, but that's just something that I particularly think about when you're talking about magnetic tools. So you can see the button on the side of the flashlight here. All right, very smooth, very easy to use. Uh, here's a pro tip, all right, something I do with all my flashlights. If it has a pocket clip, okay, that is positionable, because some flashlights don't. Sometimes there's a little notch there, so it has to be in a specific spot. 
But if you do have a flashlight with a pocket clip on it and a side switch, I would always orientate that pocket clip so it is in line with that uh, button. The reason being is if you're grabbing a flashlight, more than likely it's dark. All right, so if you take it out of your pocket, you don't want to have to fumble around, pushing and pushing, rotating it to try to find where that button is. That pocket clip now acts as a guide. So you can, you know, grab this in any position, feel the pocket clip and know that it's right above it. Okay, so it's in line with the pocket clip. It's just an easy way uh, to reference where that button is, especially if you have to take your flashlight out really quickly and turn it on. You know, you can get to that, you know, without fumbling around. All right, so just a simple little tip. Now, if we look at the bottom of the flashlight, you can see that there is a hole that's drilled through. All right, so that would be your lanyard hole. If you needed one, there's no lanyard provided with this light when it's new. Just because it's smaller, I didn't think it was necessary. Very few people actually use lanyards on their flashlights, I've noticed talking to people over the years. Uh, but I don't know anyone who uses one, you know, on a single AA or single AAA size light. But it is there in case you want to put it on your keychain or something. You can definitely fit a split ring in there. I happen to think it's a little big uh, for keys, but... You know, everyone's different. So if you don't mind a, a slightly larger light, you can definitely work on a set of keys. Keep in mind, you know, it's gonna be a little hefty. And as a lot of people know, if you start building up your keys where it's really heavy, it could, you know, wear out your ignition in the car. So if you've ever owned a through night light, the UI on this is very simple, very straightforward. All right, as I mentioned before, you saw in the paperwork, there's five different modes. The lowest mode is the firefly mode. So in the off position, you're just gonna push and hold down that button. And you can see that's the firefly mode. This is just a half a lumen, all right? This runs for an estimated 13 days for them. I will eventually test that as I've done before in the past because it lasted a very long time. Um, I'm guessing it's gonna last a little bit more on a fresh battery, but you know, at least 13 days. So when the flashlight is off and you simply push the button, it will turn on, all right? If you push and hold it again, it is going to cycle between the low and medium mode. All right, you can see we're on low. Obviously that's medium, it's a little bit brighter. If I go back to low, shut the light off, turn it back on, you can see it has mode memory. All right, if I go to the medium, shut it off, turn it back on, it goes back to medium. All right, so whatever your preferred light output is, most people like to just you know put as much light out as possible. So in order to get to the high mode, all you have to do is double click. All right, when you double click, it goes right to high in either the off position, double click, or even if you just have the light on, even you know if it's in low or medium mode, you could double click to go right to that high. Once the flashlight is in high, all right, you're gonna double click again for strobe. And it's that simple. So to quickly access strobe mode from the off position, all right, let's say you take it out of your pocket and you wanna quickly get the strobe for whatever you know emergency situation there is, all you have to do is hit it four times. One, two, three, four, and it goes right to strobe. Um, you know, for me, I think about animals more than people. Of course, you can use strobe mode, you know, in a defensive situation. It's non-lethal. It, it doesn't hurt anyone. It just temporarily distracts them. Um, and, of course, if it's dark enough, it's going to disorientate them. They're not going to know where you are. They're going to be blinded. And it gives you time to get away. That's an awesome thing, but I don't really focus too much on that. I think about animals. If I'm taking a walk at dusk or nighttime and I, you know, stumble across some kind of wild animal that might pose some kind of a threat, a flashlight's a very good thing to have with strobe mode, okay? They're not gonna know where you are. They're probably gonna get spooked by it and run away. So it's very easy. Some flashlights have dedicated strobe modes. You know, I don't think that's totally necessary, but I think it is 100% necessary to have strobe mode in, you know, an EDC type flashlight because you just never know when you're gonna use it. Now, as I mentioned, this takes a single AA battery, all right? It does not come with the light, but most people have them in their house. So you just unscrew the head of the light and there it is. It goes with the positive facing up. If you look down in there, you can probably see underneath the spring is that magnet, all right? So it's a fairly large magnet down in there. Again, the reason I went with the AA battery is just because you can find them everywhere. If you're in your home, there's a good chance you probably have a AA battery. In an emergency, you can probably take it from the remote control for your TV or some other electronic item that you have somewhere in the house. Uh, if you're out and about, most stores have them. Gas stations sell them. Grocery stores sell them. You know, big box stores sell them. They're everywhere and they're affordable. That's why I went with the AA. Now, if you look at the head of light, you can see the LED in there. That's a Cree XPL-L LED. All right, and you can see the reflector is heavily stippled. All right, a heavy orange peel. To give you an idea on the beam on this light, inside about 10 feet away from the wall, you're getting roughly like a three foot hot spot. All right, and then you're getting another four or five feet beyond that with spill. All right, again, that's on high, the 230 lumens. Plenty to see indoors. 
Uh, if you're outside, you could probably see very clearly up to about 30 feet or so. So the price on these is $40. I think it's a, a very good price range. It was important that this was not super expensive. I didn't want to budge on the titanium. Could have been cheaper if we went with aluminum, you know, and there was also the option of maybe doing something in copper or brass. That's also a pretty popular thing these days, but I think titanium would be more, you know, widely enjoyed. So that's pretty much it guys. I mean, since I've got it, uh, obviously I've been enjoying it quite a bit. Has all the features that I like in a little pocket EDC light. You know, if you guys end up picking one up, please come back to this video. Let everyone else know down in the comment section what you think of yours. Uh, I'm not sure on uh, production numbers on this or not, so I have no idea how many are made. And I'm not sure how long they're gonna be available. But uh, I did wanna thank Thrunite for you know hearing me out and taking some of my ideas and, and again, giving me credit by putting my logo on there. Thought that was pretty nice. So yeah, that's it. Hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.